Welcome back to another episode of the Melody Podcast. I'm your host, James Shelton, and today I'm going to talk to y'all about live performances and what all goes into making a live performance memorable. So if you don't know, a live melody typically refers to a musical melody performed in a live setting, such as a concert, gig, or other live music performance. In this context, Live indicates that the music is being played in real time as opposed to being recorded or pre-produced version. A melody is a sequence of single pitches that make up a musical line or tune. It's often the most prominent and recognizable part of a piece of music. When performed live, a melody is played by musicians on instruments or sung by vocalists creating a dynamic and immediate musical experience for the audience. Live melodies can span various genres and styles, from classical and jazz to pop, rock, electronic, and so much more. The term simply emphasizes the real-time, in-person nature of a musical performance. Experience in live performance is a multi-sensory and emotionally charged encounter. Here's a few descriptions of what it often feels like to be at a live concert. Anticipation and excitement. As the lights dim and the crowd hushes, there is a palpable sense of anticipation. The excitement builds and there's a collective energy in the air. There's also a sensory overload. The moment the music starts, there's an immersive sensory experience. The sound envelops you. The stage lights dance and the atmosphere vibrates with the collective heartbeat of the audience. Connection with the artist. Witnessing musicians perform live creates a unique connection. You see the sweat on their brows, you hear the nuisances in their voices or the instruments, and witness passion firsthand. This intimate connection is often profound. The emotional impact. Live performances have the power to evoke a range of emotions. Whether it's the joy of an upbeat melody, the nostalgia of a favorite song, or the death of an emotional ballad, the music resonates on a deeper level. The shared experience. There's a sense of unity in a live audience. Strangers become companions in the shared appreciation of the music. Applause, cheers, and even silence become common expressions. Spontaneous and unpredictability. Live performances often come with surprises. Musicians might engage in improv, change the arrangement of a song, or interact with the audience in unexpected ways. This spontaneously adds an element of excitement. Time distortion. The concept of time can become become fluid during a live performance. What feels like minutes might be hours, as the immersive experience takes you out of the everyday life and into the present moment. Energizing or relaxing atmosphere. Depending on the genre and style of the performance, live events can be energizing or calming and soothing. The atmosphere created by the music contributes significantly to the overall mood. Memorable moments. Live performances often leave a lasting imprint with memorable moments. It could be a breathtaking solo, a powerful vocal performance, or a particular interaction between the audience, artist and the audience. And finally, the post-performance euphoria. After the last note has played, there's a lingering euphoria. 
The experience stays with you and the memory of the live performance becomes a source of joy and inspiration. In essence, a live performance is a visual and transformative journey that transcends the auditory and visual aspects, touching the soul and creating memories that last forever. So everyone has their idea of the best live performances of all time. But here's what I gathered from the internet. So number one, best performance of all time is Queen, the Live Aid Tour in 1985. Number two, Jimi Hendrix and Woodstock 1969. Number three, The Beatles, Rooftop Concert 1969. Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson's Motown 25, Yesterday, Today, Forever, 1983. Number five, Nirvana, MTV Unplugged in New York, 1993. Bruce Springsteen, Hammersmith, Odeon, Odeon, Odeon 1975. Bob, number seven, Bob Marley and the Wailers, The Lyceum, 1975. I hope I said that right. Number eight, Prince, Super Bowl 41 Halftime Show, 2007. Number nine, David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust Tour, 1972 through 1973. And number 10, Pink Floyd with the Pulse Tour in 1994. These performances represent just a fraction of the incredible live moments in music history. And opinions on the best performances can vary widely based on individual preferences and cultural influences. I haven't been to many concerts in my life, but in my opinion of those who I've seen, they put on a really good show. And the people that I've seen were Post Malone, Roddy Rich, Joey Roll, Yellow Wolf, and Struggle Jennings. I've actually been to two or three Joey Roll concerts and probably two more this year. Hopefully this year I'll get to see more artists though. So if you like to play instruments, you should probably stay away from the glass harmonica. You would think that the worst thing that some musical instruments can do to you is give you a headache, but it turns out there is one out there that can not only cause health problems in both players and listeners, but it can even kill them. It's called a glass harmonica and was actually invented by Benjamin Franklin in 1761. It seems harmless enough, just some glass bowls of various sizes spinning on a spindle, but it is not it is known as the world's most dangerous instrument. The way it works is a foot pedal spins on the bowls. Spins the bowls and each bowl makes a different sound. The player dips their fingers in water and touches the bowl's edges to create a unique sound. Soon after its invention, the harmonica became very popular across the globe, with the likes of Mozart and Beethoven composing music for it. However, before long, horror stories about the instrument started to circulate, including claims that it was killing people. The harmonica's complexity was reported overstimulating the brain, causing performers and even listeners dizziness, nervousness, hallucination, cramps, muscle spasms, and even death. According to the Franklin Institute, the issues culminated with an incident in German Germany where a child died during an harmonica performance. After that, some towns started banning it, and people believed its high-pitched tones were invoking spirits of the dead, driving people mad, or had magical powers. Others suspected lead from the glass bowls were being absorbed into musicians' fingers. While no proof or ex explanation, explanation was given to any of the symptoms or stories, it was enough to cause the harmonica to fall out of flavor. Not with Ben Franklin, though. He ignored all the controversy and continued to play the instrument until the end of his life with none of the symptoms mentioned. These days, glass harmonicas are still played and produced, though they still aren't the most popular instrument and many people have never even heard of them. I definitely never heard of it before I saw, saw it on the news today. Let's just stick with the traditional instruments no one needs to die while performing music now it's time for the music fun fact of the week singing dissolves stress singing can significantly reduce stress when you sing or listen to your favorite music your endocrine system releases stress 
busting hormones. <laughs> we feel relaxed after a day of hard work when we listen to music. Here's the music history for February 24th. In 1998, Elton John is knighted by Queen Elizabeth II during a ceremony ceremony at the Buckingham Palace. In 1993, Eric Clapton wins big at the Grammy Awards, taking three awards for Tears in Heaven, two more for his album Unplugged, and Best Rock Song for his acoustic version of Layla. In 1973, Rob Roberta Flax, Killing Me Softly, with his song, hits number one for the first of five weeks, a longer run than any other song of 1973. It was written by Charles Fox and Norman, Norman Gimble, the guys who wrote the theme songs to Happy Days. And in 1965, the Beatles began sh shooting their second movie, Help, in the Bahamas, as director Richard Lester films them riding bicycles near the airport. Go check out shopmelody.com and see all the merch we have to offer. Support Melody and this podcast by buying and wearing the merch. Help us get the word out about the coolest music history podcast out there. Share with your friends, your family, your dogs, your cats, your ex-lovers, the man down the hall, the guy that dumps your trash, whoever. Just share it and help us get this podcast out there. Thanks for listening to the Melody Podcast. It's going to feel like the 60s in here next week. Hi, I'm Charles. James and I thank you for listening to the Melody Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please consider following us and leaving a review. Also visit shopmelody.com to buy some merch. This has been a Melody Media Production.